This video is brought to you by Ultium 365, where the world designs electronics. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a LoRa network using Arduino boards, SX1278 LoRa transceiver modules, a servo, an I2C supported SSD 13060 LED display module, and a pair of potentiometers. I have already uploaded a video on the LoRa network in which I have practically demonstrated that how a LoRaWAN can be implemented by using multiple LoRa transceiver modules. Guys, you might be thinking that when I have already implemented LoRaWAN, then what is the need to work on this project once again? Well, you will get its answer in a minute. As you know, every person or a company has a specific requirement that for what purpose a LoRa network has to be designed. Similarly, I also had to keep certain personal requirements into consideration when I was designing my LoRaWAN or LoRa network. I wanted that my designed LoRa network had a master node and rest of the LoRa nodes just act as sensor nodes. So keeping in view this necessity before me, I worked out and designed this LoRaWAN network. I used a total of three nodes in this LoRaWAN network. To the master LoRa node and I2C supported OLED display modules connected which I used for displaying the data received from the other two LoRa nodes. To the LoRa node 1, a potentiometer is connected which I used as the sensor. You can replace this sensor with any other sensor of your choice. To the LoRa node 2, DS18B20, waterproof one wire digital temperature sensor is connected. The master LoRa node first sends a request to the LoRa Note 1. For this, I created a timer using the Millis function. So for the first five seconds, the master node sends multiple requests to the LoRa Note 1 and receives data from the Note 1. This time duration can be changed in the programming, but it's good to give it enough time so that the master node can get multiple replies from the end device. As you can clearly see, for the first 5 seconds, it receives data from the Note 1 and then for the other 5 seconds, it receives data from the LoRa Note 2. The Note name is also printed on the OLED display model, so there is no confusion at all. You can clearly see that in this project, I'm only monitoring the sensors and I'm not controlling anything. A few days back, one of my followers asked me that how can we send sensors data from the master LoRa node to multiple LoRa end devices. If you remember, during my previously designed LoRa network, I used to send data to master node from end devices. Whereas in today's LoRa network, I will send data or commands from the master LoRa node to multiple LoRa end devices. As you can see, this is a master LoRa node having two potentiometers connected to it. Servo is connected to LoRa node one whereas the OLED display module is connected with LoRa Node 2. I have programmed the master LoRa node in such a manner that one of the two potentiometers will control the servo, whereas value of the second potentiometer will be printed on the OLED display module. Instead of using the potentiometers, you can use some other types of sensors and the same thing applies to the servo and OLED display module. It's totally up to you what exactly you want to control. By the way, you might be thinking how does Arduino come to know about which potentiometer's data has to be sent on which LoRa node or LoRa end device? Well, you don't have to be confused. In this network, every LoRa node has a specific address and it is with the help of these addresses, the master LoRa node knows which potentiometer data has to be sent onto which LoRa end device. Enough with the talking, let's practically see this LoRa network in action. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. 
design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. If you want to start with Ultim Designer, then you can click on the first link in the description. You can clearly see I have powered up all LoRa nodes and you can also clearly see there is no physical connection between the nodes because it is obviously a wireless network. So you can see how easily we can transmit data and commands from a master LoRa node to multiple LoRa end devices. You can also convert master node into an IoT gateway and as such you can manage your LoRa nodes from any country of the world through the application of your cell phone. Therefore, if you are interested to learn how to design a LoRa gateway, you must surely watch out my previous videos. You can find links in the description given below. I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system works. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. The VCC of the LoRa module is connected with a 3.3 volt of the Arduino. The MISO pin of the LoRa module is connected with the Arduino pin 12. The MOSI pin is connected with pin 11. The SCK pin of the LoRa module is connected with pin 13. The NSS pin is connected with the Arduino pin 10 and the ground pin of the LoRa module is connected with the Arduino's ground. Two potentiometers are connected with the Arduino analog pins A2 and A3. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram of the LoRa node 1. The LoRa module connections with the Arduino Nano remains exactly the same. On the left side you can see a 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM705 voltage regulator. We use this regulated 5 volts to power up the Arduino and all the other electronics. The signal wire of the servo is connected with the PWM pin 3 of the Arduino. If you want to use a large servo motor then you should use a separate 5 volt power supply with the servo. Otherwise your Arduino will keep resetting. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram of the LoRa Node 2. The LoRa module connections with the Arduino and the 5 volt regulated power supply wiring remains exactly the same. The SDA and SCL or SCK pins of the SSD1306 OLED display module are connected with the A4 and A5 pins of the Arduino while the VCC and ground pins of the OLED display module are connected with the Arduino's 5 volts and ground pins. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. This code is for the master LoRa node. This code is for the LoRa node 1 and this code is for the LoRa node 2. So let's first start with the master LoRa node. 
I started off by defining the addresses of master LoRa node, LoRa node 1 and LoRa node 2. Next I defined pins for the two potentiometers and some variables. Inside the setup function, I activated the serial communication for the debugging purposes and using the pin mode function, I set the two potentiometers is the input. Inside the loop function, after every few milliseconds, we read the two potentiometers and send their values to LoRa Node 1 and LoRa Node 2. Now let's take a look at the code of LoRa Node 1. This time I also added another library servo.h which I'm using to control the servo. You can also see the address of the master LoRa Node and LoRa Node 1. So LoRa Node 1 will only receive data from the master LoRa Node. Inside the setup function you can see servo is connected with the PWM pin 3 of the Arduino. Inside the loop function, we have only one function which is the onReceive function. Now what it does is, it looks for if the LoRa module has received any data, then the Arduino reads all the characters and make a complete message and saves it in the incoming variable. Finally, we split the incoming message to retrieve the potentiometer data and then we make this data to set the limit from 0 to 180 to control the servo. Get value function is a user defined function and it is used to split a string message using a delimiter. Now let's take a look at the code of LoRa Node 2. The LoRa Node 2 code is just like the LoRa Node 1. The only difference is that this time I'm printing the potentiometer value on the OLED display module rather than controlling the servo. So that's all about the programming. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.